Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. Today I put together 18 of my best bee DIYs using supplies from the Dollar Tree. We're going to be doing bee wreaths, bee wall hangings, and even a bee coffee bar. So let's get started with this bee wreath form that I found from the Dollar Tree. Now the only thing I didn't like about it is I'm like, why is it red? I'm going to have a really hard time covering this. If it were black or gold, um, it would go with like bee colors, but why red? No idea. So I'm going to use spray paint. I never use spray paint, but for this application, I totally need to. So I go outside with my black spray paint and I just give it a nice coat of black on the top and the bottom. Um... Just because if you see any of that frame, at the end, the red would really stand out. It's not going to go with my B colors, right? So I want to cover the back parts of this with, you know, different fabrics that would be really pretty. And so I picked up some bright yellow craft fabric from the Dollar Tree. I thought that would be perfect for like the B body and for the B head. So just using a Sharpie, I'm going to draw on the outside of the wires so I will be able to cut this down to size because um, I'm gonna have wings right next to it um, and then the head as well. Um, that way none of my fabric is gonna overlap. I have to get it cut pretty um, exactly what I need to go on the back, but just enough overlap to be able to glue that to the wire of the bee wreath form. And I love the bee wreath form. I honestly, I've never seen this before. I don't know if it's a new product, but I thought it was kind of interesting that they just now got it in. And I'm just gonna cut those all down, just cutting along the little Sharpie lines. And good news, two of my Dollar Trees have put the three and $5 stuff in their freezer sections and it says Dollar Tree Plus. So I keep asking them, are you guys turning into a Dollar Tree Plus? And nobody knows, but I, I'm hopeful because I really want a Dollar Tree Plus. Now, this is the excess fabric that we had left over from our little beehive, the little burlap with the little daisies all over. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to cut out each wing by going on the outside of the wire so I can cut that down to size. I thought at first I wanted to do burlap wings, but I thought that the addition of the flowers would make my bees and flower theme. I thought at first it was going to be too busy because I am going to make like the bees striped, but oh my gosh, it turned out so cute. I'm so glad that I chose to do the flowers. So once I got them all sketched out and everything cut out, I thought the bee abdomen definitely needed stripes to make it look like a bee. Now the only black ribbon that I could find at my Dollar Tree is this black sheer ribbon. Normally, don't like it. I try to avoid it, but for this, it kind of turned out pretty cool. So I'm going to use like a layer of a Mod Podge, a stripe of Mod Podge, and just sit that on top. I did find it was a little hard to get it attached, maybe the texture or the material of the ribbon. So I do go over it with a little Mod Podge as well on top. And then I'm just going to do little stripes all the way down. As you can see, it kind of just, it's real kind of glossy. So I do Mod Podge a little on top as well. That's gonna dry clear, you won't be able to see it. But that sheer um, on top of the yellow just gave it a very like subtle, like dirt gray stripe instead of like a bright black stripe. So I kind of, I'm glad that it was sheer. And I'm just overlapping the sides. I can always trim down the excess later. I'm just trying to get it all glued down. And I'm just kind of eyeballing the spacing between the stripes. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'm going to leave the, the head just yellow and then have like the bee body bee striped. This one I was, this is when I was like, oh, the stripes and the flowers, it's going to be too busy. But I can't wait for you guys to see it. It turned out so cute together. I think this might be my favorite DIY today. So then once I get them all glued down, um, I'm going to simply cut off all the excess ribbon, 
trimming it down to size because again you're not going to want any overlap because you're going to have like wings and stuff like right next to it but you just want it to be wide enough to be able to be glued to that wire reform um, without any excess so here it is lining that up to see if it's going to work and it looks like it's pretty good and then um, we can start putting uh, this guy together. I'm just going to randomly start with a head part and just do a small bead of hot glue all along the edges and then glue that to the frame. Now, it's okay that I, you can kind of see my Sharpie, you can kind of see some of the glue because we're going to frame the entire bee out with Dollar Tree rope. Now we're gonna do the same thing here with the bee body. Just working quickly, I'm gonna do a bead of hot glue all along every edge. Ah! And then lay that on there. Making sure it's all lined up and that every wire side is attached. Now we're gonna do the same thing with the bees. I find that the, you know, the burlap wanted to curl up a little bit, so kind of trying to hold it flat again maybe i should have ironed it i wasn't sure how the um, flowers on there would do with ironing but i was able to glue it on there pretty good i cut these out maybe a little bit larger because the the wings have two rows of metal so i can have a little bit more of an overlap and it's not going to cause any issues with the adjoining sections so again the little burlap wing and we're going to glue that on to that first row of a metal reform. You can kind of start seeing the vision of this guy. And now this is the rope that we're going to use. It is, I think, the eight foot Dollar Tree rope. It was the perfect width for this because what we're going to do is we're going to go around all of the single wires once with it. And then we're and then where it's doubled up, we can double it up. There's plenty of room. I'm going to start like on the bottom of the little bee head and we're going to circle around just working one section at a time, making sure that um, I cover up like all my Sharpie, all the metal, any hot glue, anything that was exposed, it covers up everything, cutting it down to size and gluing that around the little bee head. Now, I thought the antenna were cute as is and I painted them black, so I'm going to leave them because that would look like an antenna. And then we're gonna go around. The only tricky part of the wings is right here in the middle. Um, you do kind of have to pinch that because you're not gonna have a lot of room. And then glue that down. And then go around with our second row. So I'm just kind of working one section at a time on this. And isn't this cute? Again, this little area there was a little tricky. I just kind of get it in there as much as I can kind of hot glue that as tight as, of a corner as I can and then hot glue that around and now we can frame out the um, other side as well. I did outside first on this one, inside first on the other one, doesn't really matter. You're just gluing it down to the, the metal. Actually the outside first may have worked better for that tricky little corner there in the middle of the wing. And if you find there's any gapping, like I had right there between the two ropes, you can always just glue them to each other because you don't want anything to show in between. Super cute. And now we can do like the bee body with just one row of rope. Just working around the little stinger at the end, cutting it down to size and gluing it down. So cute. I just have to get rid of any excess hot glue. And then I'm going to carefully try to burn off any of my fuzzies from the rope. Don't want to burn any of the fabric that we put in there. But how cute is this bee? I thought about attaching a hanger, but I thought I would kind of want to um, hang it at a like diagonal like it's flying anyway. And I thought the little antennas would be perfect for hanging. And so I really don't need to do anything else to it. There it is. And see, it's really not too busy because the rope really is very neutral and kind of takes it down a notch. But I think the different patterns work really well together. What do you guys think? 
This is definitely one of my favorite bee DIYs that I've ever done. I just saw these little bee wreath forms um, available in my Dollar Tree already for spring, so you'll have to check yours out. My store actually had them on an end cap. Okay, for the next bee DIY, we're going to use one of these. I'm going to use the wooden one. You can use the plastic one if you want. They're just a little cathedral windows from the Dollar Tree. And then one of these little burlap bags. What I want to do is make this into like a beehive. And I thought the shape of this sign was perfect. I went with the wooden one because it was a little bit thinner. And I thought it would work well because I could use the front and the back of that burlap bag to kind of sandwich that in there and make a little beehive. So I'm just going to sit it like right on top of the bag. It's going to fit perfectly on there. And then I'm just going to use a Sharpie and go about like a half an inch all the way around and just sketch out like a little pattern there of how much of the burlap that I want. And then since they're kind of already right on top of each other, I can just go in there and cut it out. Now, the reason I used these burlap bags from the Dollar Tree is because they're kind of like a synthetic burlap. Um, they're not as see-through. If you're going to use like some actual burlap, um, you might need to put some fabric underneath of the top layer to um, so you can't really see that frame through it. You don't want any of that like window sections to show through. But this is pretty solid. It's got like that plastic surface on the inside. So pretty cool. And um, then I'm just going to pop off the little welcome sign off the front of the window. And I'm just going to set that aside because we can use that later on in this DIY. Has a little bit of cardboard there too. And then I thought we could just sandwich that in between the two. There are a few little nails sticking out there. So be careful on that um, from popping off that little sign. And I thought about like stuffing this with like some plush to make it like kind of fluffy. I kind of wish I had put a little bit more filler in there, like some fabric or a little bit of filler, but it, it worked out anyway. So we have the like burlap side down and like plastic side up there, then the frame, and then we're gonna sandwich that in there. So I'm just gonna go all the way around, working quickly with a bead of hot glue. And we can just sandwich that in there. It's kind of like stuffing a pillow, but we're gonna have like a little wood sign in there. And then just glue that all around. Um, I thought about kind of making this a standalone project, just having a little beehive, which is one reason why I covered the back. Um, and it also is important for like sandwiching in in there. But once I get the beehive done, I actually um, make it into a sign um, and add a lot more details to it, just cause it kind of, you know, kept growing. So I'm gonna take some twine from the Dollar Tree and I wanna wrap that around that shape um, to give you like that bumpy beehive look. And so I just hot glue it to the top and then simply I'm gonna wrap it all the way around over and over, kind of forming the little beehive lines. I was hoping that like that fabric on the outside would give me that like bumpy texture along the side of a beehive. It kind of did. I think if I would have put like a little polyfill in there or maybe a little bit of fabric, I kind of I could have got like a little bit of a puffier look. Um, if I did it again, I probably would put a little bit of um, filler in there, a little fluff. So just kind of pulling that as tight as I can. And then um, I think that's good enough. I'm going to go ahead and glue that on the back and cut this off. And I thought burlap would be a good choice for a beehive. Um, I kind of want to go with like traditional yellow and black bee colors today, but I want to keep it kind of rustic to go with my coastal farmhouse vibe in my house. And so burlap's always perfect. That's when I decided let's go ahead and make it into a whole sign. So I'm going to use one of these little chalkboards from the Dollar Tree. I love using these because they're big, um, they're thick, and they don't bow often. And so I thought that would be a good choice. It's going to fit on there really nicely. And so the first thing I want to do is cover it with some fabric. I found some of this beehive um, fabric at the Dollar Tree. They have two different kinds. This one is like the brighter yellow. 
super, super cute. And, you know, I'm just going to kind of cover the sign with that. They don't really have scrapbook paper and patterns at the Dollar Tree. And that's basically where I shop there in Target. Um, but I think we'll just cover this with the fabric. So I just kind of put it on top of it. I'm not going to bother like ironing it or anything like that because um, I think um, it's going to flatten out the wrinkles in there. And I noticed that one side was straight cut, one side not so much. So I'll use the one, one side that I can use. But otherwise, I'm just going to use like a yellow Sharpie, kind of sketch that out so I'll know how big of a piece of fabric we're going to need to cover that. And then we're just going to go in and cut that out. I'm not too worried about like my raw edges being exposed because I am going to frame it out um, with some rope later. So as long as I can get like a fairly straight line um, along the edges, I think we're going to be okay. Now the chalkboard itself had all of that writing on the front of it. And I thought this fabric super thick. Yeah, you can't see through. But what I did find out is when I do attach it, you could see through a little bit. So if you are going to use a chalkboard, you might want to paint it white first or use the back. So just using Mod Podge, I'm going to do... Whenever I do fabric, I try to do like a fairly, you know, thick layer of Mod Podge all over um, to make sure it is good and stuck down. That way I don't really have to Mod Podge on top because it'll kind of seep through the fabric a little bit, sealing it on there. And this was super easy. I just put it on there and smoothed it out. Now I have... Um, saved the hanger that was on there and I'm going to use that same hanger to hang the whole thing but I'm just like whenever I mod podge fabric I kind of like to go over it with like a paper towel making sure that it's smoothed down and any excess glue is wiped away so it's going to dry a little faster. Now, as you can see, I did cut it a little bit larger than it needed to be. I tried to go in there with some scissors and kind of trim it up. Um, I don't know. I don't think my any of my scissors were quite sharp enough. I think my fabric scissors, I definitely need to get new ones because I must have used them on something other than fabric because they are just so dull. I don't know. Maybe I can sharpen them. Um, but I decided to, I have one of those like little rotary rollers um, by Fiskars. And I thought that might cut the fabric. I haven't used that in a long time. So um, I'm just going to put down like a cutting mat and use this. I use this to cut my like Cricut vinyl. <laughs> Hence the Cricut mat there too. And that actually worked really well. Once I figure out how to get it open. <laughs> and it pretty much cut it straight. There's a few um, areas that it didn't. Um, and then, But I can just quickly trim that. And it's going to give me a perfect cut all along the edges. It was better almost to be too big on that than to be too small because I wanted all of that black to be covered up with the honeycomb fabric. So we have the start of our sign. See where you can kind of see the white paint through, like on the little title and stuff like that. But I thought, you know, we got a lot of stuff that's going to go on on this sign. Um, I don't think you're going to be able to see any of it in the end. So I'm just using my little Cricut um, weeder. <laughs> to poke the holes in the fabric where the hanger is going to be for this. And then I'm just gonna use some Dollar Tree twine, the really thin twine from the Dollar Tree. It's gonna make it easier to like feed through these holes and kind of like just double knot it there on the front. I always like to hang it from the knot in the front. I find that the Dollar Tree signs um, hang straighter or flatter on the wall when I do that. And so just doing the same thing here on the other side. I wanted to get that in first before I do any of the framing or anything like that on there um, because then it's going to be harder to get into it. Now here is our little beehive. I thought about like centering it, but I thought it might look cuter like kind of off center and we can like do words down the side of it. So that's where it's going to go. Our little beehive. I think it's super cute. I'm just going to use hot glue to glue that down to our fabric. And you could use, you know, rope or um, twine to wrap this as well. It's going to be a lot more work, but it would be really cute too because you get like that bee scap look. 
so we got that all glued down. Now I was trying to think how we could decorate the rest of this. And um, I thought we could use some of these little like Scrabble tiles from the Dollar Tree and that like welcome sign that was on the little window to begin with. And so I thought it'd be cute to spell out like welcome to our hive. So I went through uh, my stash and picked out all of the letters here. Welcome to our hive. And I thought that'd be really cute for a little B sign. So it's just a matter of attaching all of those to our sign. So I'm just gonna hot glue down our welcome, kind of like offsetting it a little bit, but leaving enough room where I can kind of frame out the entire thing with some rope. And then I thought I would put two R at the top here and then hive down the side to kind of fill in some of that extra space. When you're gluing down those little Scrabble tiles, make sure you don't use too much glue because you don't want it like oozing out, but aren't they cute? I used to buy those at Dollar General, um, but I'm so glad that I can find them at Dollar Tree, even though it is very sporadic, whether I can find them at Dollar Tree or not. I think they're very popular. I wonder if you can order them at dollartree.com. I am a new affiliate with them. I'll have to check that out. You probably have to order a whole case though. <laughs> now I'm just gonna use some black paint and a little tiny brush from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to just paint like a little arch, little doorway for a little beehive right here on the front. Just kind of um, trying to center it and kind of um, keep it like rounded and trying not to get any on the fabric below. Super cute. Now this is the rope that we're gonna use to go around it. I thought rope would be a nice touch because it's gonna give you, you know, the bee skeps are usually made out of ropes and stuff like that. So I thought it was gonna totally give you that vibe. And we have a total of six um, BDIYs today. All things that you can hang on your wall for spring and summer. And they just all turned out so cute. They were so fun to make. So I just gonna hot glue this around just keep going with one piece. I like to work like a half a section at a time because I wanna make sure that that hot glue is not setting up before I get that down. Trying to go as close as I can to the edge to frame it out, but also it's gonna cover up any of the raw edge of the honeycomb fabric. And you could use either one of the honeycomb fabrics for this. The other one is kind of a more orange, maybe a smaller print. It's pretty cool. I used the other print, I think on another DIY today, and I also used it on my bee coffee bar. My bee coffee bar video blew up on Google, um, but I don't know how many of my regular viewers got to see it. It doesn't really look like very many. So if you haven't seen my bee coffee bar video, you gotta check it out, it's really fun. Okay, these little wood bees, I had one package of these left over from the coffee bar and I'm so glad I did because I went to every single one of my Dollar Trees, um, five, five Dollar Trees to look for more of these yesterday and they were all gone. So they must be popular. They had all the other bee stuff, but not these. So hopefully you have some of these because they are perfect little decorations for this little beehive. I'm just gonna scatter some around. They have stickers on them, but I am just gonna use hot glue to glue them down. And then I thought a little yellow wildflowers from the Dollar Tree would be really cute on there too. I wanted to do the theme of honeybees and flowers, please. So I wanna do bees and flowers on all of them, and I think they look so fun for spring and summer. So I just took a piece off and I'm just going to hot glue the stem down here at the base of the beehive. The colors are perfect. And then I thought we could just kind of decorate, you know, like around um, the little beehive with flowers and such. I kind of want that to kind of sit just so. And so I do hot glue it down like the leaf to the rope just to make sure that it stays in place. Now for this one, I'm just gonna need maybe just a little one flower over here, just to kind of fill that area in and just kind of scatter them about. I think this turned out really fun. It's really unique and um, definitely a cute little homemade sign. 
And basically, um, the only specific things for bees on this is that honeycomb fabric or the little wood bees. You can probably improvise if you can't find those with scrapbook paper, or you can even print out some honeycomb. Or if you're really ambitious, I guess you could try to paint it on there, but that sounds hard. <laughs> and then I decided I needed one more bee right over here. And you know, I went to all those stores looking for honeybees, and this is the only DIY today where I actually, I think, end up using this. <laughs> so it was kind of a waste of my time. I thought I was going to need more. And there is the final product. Welcome to our hive. It's super cute. It's a nice size sign. You could use this anywhere. You could use this like at your entryway. You could use this on your front door if you wanted. I think it's really cute and really sweet. And here it is. Welcome to our hive. You can see that, you know, um, it's not real puffy between the strings there. That's why I wish I would have put a little polyfill in there. But by the time I had it all put together, I didn't really want to cut it open to stuff it. That would be a really cool um, effect to kind of have like the bumpy hive. If you're enjoying today's video, be sure to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. We're trying to get to 30,000 subscribers. Okay, our next DIY, check out this cute little beehive frame um, that I got at the Dollar Tree. They've actually been having this in like the regular like crafter square section of my store. And then look guys, I found some of that adorable a new burlap they have at the Dollar Tree. They have it with daisies, they have it with polka dots, they have it with stripes, they even have it with bees, but I've looked everywhere and all my boxes are um, absent the bees. Somebody went in and bought all the bee, the bee burlap. I can't wait to find some. But I thought flowers would be perfect to put behind one of these little gold honeycomb reefs. Look, it's a perfect size. And then I thought the burlap would look great for like a beehive, but the flowers are going to go great with my bee and flower theme. So just going to kind of cut that down a little bit. And I kind of wish I would have ironed it from maybe behind first because there is a little wrinkle in there. Hopefully it will flatten out over time because I have it stretched. But basically, I'm just going to use some of this Dollar Tree rope again. And we are going to glue the rope down to the reform. And then the excess hot glue is going to seep down onto the burlap below it. We're going to kind of sandwich the frame in between the rope and the burlap. And this actually worked better than I thought it would. Again, I'm working like on a silicone surface, so it's easy to hot glue on. Um, you don't have to worry about it sticking. That's my favorite thing. If you guys don't have a silicone mat, like totally should pick one up. I have like my the, my existing one and my old blue one, both lifted, listed in my Amazon shop below. Um, they are well worth it. I have huge ones for my workspace, but you can always get a smaller one as well. And it would be um, less expensive, but they are worth their weight in gold. So I'm just gonna do one row at a time on the honeycomb, just starting where it starts with a new piece of rope and then going all the way to the end, cutting it down and gluing it down. This project was so easy to put together, but look how cute it is. At first I thought the flowers might be a little too busy for this, but I actually think it's perfect. I've seen people make them with rope and like just plain burlap. And it looked a little plain, so I think that the flowers were definitely the touch that was needed. So check out your Dollar Trees and see if you can find some of this adorable burlap. I just love it. So just have one section left here, the little circle at the top. And gluing that down. Now, I'm going to flip it over. I'm not so sure at this point whether it's glued down. It kind of really is but I thought maybe I might need to reinforce it. So I do go along each row and put a little hot glue on the back of the burlap and just using my little finger protector to kind of smush that down in there just to make sure that it's good and secure, even though it kind of was. Now at that point, I can cut off my excess fabric and just leave that like honeycomb shape. So as close as I can get to the rope, I'm just going in with my scissors and cutting that off. And it was actually pretty easy. The only tricky parts were kind of down in the corners. And 
Um, you definitely want to um, cut cut it at the end like this and leave it as a rectangle because um, you don't want any of the pieces to be too small where it would kind of fall in and you would have a gap between the sides. There's our little honeycomb. He's so cute. I thought that I would burn off the little fuzzies here. Not too much. But that rope can be a little crazy sometimes. And then I thought that our little honeycomb, all it needs is a honeybee. So I don't really have a honeybee that's kind of like the right scale for this. Those little ones would be way too small. So we're going to go in here and make our own. I'm going to use one of those little um, bee um, yard spinners from the Dollar Tree to make my bee. You could use whatever you wanted for the body, but I love the fact that this is already striped. You just got to be very careful when you're pulling it out. Otherwise, the wire will come all the way out and you'll lose your structure. Um, I was able to catch this one just in time. I also used these bees to make little bees for um, a banner for my coffee bar. Um, I'm going to switch this one up, though, and use some of these little chalkboard tag hearts from the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree for the wings. Thought that would be cute. On my coffee bar, I used burlap, so that's another option you could use as well. I really did not want these to have holes in them because I knew I was going to have to go in here and spackle them and that it would be a whole process, but I couldn't find any hearts this size that didn't have holes in them. You might have some leftover from Valentine's Day if you're lucky. Now I'm going to use the underside anyway. I don't want like that chalkboard um, to be on my wings, but I just go in and paint them ivory and you can still see that like glaring hole. That hole is like extra large on these. So I did have to go in and spackle them a couple of times to get that, you know, not so obvious. I hate that. I hate having to fill those. And then I... Just spackle it, sand it, paint it until they kind of look good. And then I thought we could just put these little hearts like underneath that little bee structure. That's going to be like the body of the bee. And then we can have like the two wings coming out each side. Kind of like that. Now I was trying to determine what to use for the head. I used like one of those little wood circles from the Dollar Tree on my coffee bar, but it was kind of small. So I kind of thought maybe bigger. Now check out these felt rolls that my Dollar Tree just got in. They have these like in the red, orange, yellows. They also have them in the green, blues, and maybe purples. And so it's just a great little roll of felt to work with. And I thought we could make a little yellow bee head. Now I struggle with circles, so I also picked up some of those chalkboard stickers from the Crafter Square, and I thought this would be the perfect size, so I'm just going to use that and actually just stick the sticker on the felt, and now I'm going to have the perfect template to cut out a little bee head. You could do this and use the black side, have a little black bee head. I wanted my bee head to be yellow, and so that's why I used the yellow felt. Now it's just um, a matter of putting uh, this little honeybee together. I did think the wings looked a little um, stark ivory. I wanted them to be distressed slightly. So I'm just gonna use some antique wax and slightly distress, wiping off the excess with a baby wipe. You guys know I love that vibe, uh, distressed vibe. Kind of tilting the hearts like that. I use a little hot glue on each one and glue the little body of my bee down. I thought that was easier than trying to make a little bee body and it's already got the little bee stripes on there and everything. Then I'm just going to simply hot glue our little bee head on there, leaving the little sticker attached. Might as well. It's going to help reinforce that. And we have a cute little bee. Wasn't that easy? So I think this is going to be like the perfect size for a little honeycomb. I plan to hang it kind of at an angle, the honeycomb um, or the beehive not a honeycomb. Um, and so I'm going to glue that down just kind of off to the side over here. Super easy, super fun. You could add some more details to yours if you wanted. I just kind of wanted the abstract shape of a bee on mine. So cute. Now I just need a way to hang it. I thought I would put my hanger like over here on the corner. That way my beehive will kind of hang at an angle. So I just take some twine and knot that up and just simply hot glue that to the back of the burlap. 
I think this turned out so cute. This will look so cute on your front door, or I'm just gonna use it as decor in my house for spring and summer. This is how it turned out, our little flower beehive for spring and summer. And there is our cute little bee. It was so fun. I had so much fun putting these DIYs together. I hope you guys are enjoying them. I really love that wreath form. I think that's great for spring or summer crafting with a little beehive. Okay, next DIY, check out this great bag that I just got at Dollar Tree yesterday. It is a bee positive bag. It's a nice large size. It's made out of like a plastic uh, material. So this DIY would even work outside because this bag is like waterproof. It's like a cool material. And I thought we could make a really cool bee sign out of it because it was nice and large. It's got that beautiful bee image on there. So just using one of these wood rounds from the Dollar Tree, I thought we could cut this out. So I'm going to go ahead and just cut the front off of the bag just to make it easier to work with. And I'll still have the back too that has the same like image on there and cut the straps off. Now I just want to kind of center it on there where everything's going to be seen and then I can just use a sharpie and draw around so I'll know where to cut the bag down to size. Now the only thing um, about this I thought you know oh it's just a bag I will just mod podge this down to my wood round it's going to be super easy. Um, I did have problems with the Mod Podge on this. I think maybe because it's made out of that plastic material, I was having a hard time getting it dry um, because like even like my heat gun couldn't really get to um, where the glue was on this. So if you're going to do this with one of these bags, you might want to use a different kind of glue, like maybe a tacky glue or any other kind of glue besides Mod Podge because... I kind of struggled with the Mod Podge part here, but trying to get this cut down to the perfect size circle, I did pretty good. And I don't know, maybe if I would have used less Mod Podge, I would have had better luck. I kind of used a heavy coat because I kind of was thinking, you know, like fabric and stuff like that, but I'll show you here. <laughs> so I put one coat down and then I went and put another coat down. Maybe I should have stopped at the first coat, maybe. And then smooth that out. Trying to get rid of any wrinkles. I did have like a few wrinkles like at the top that were kind of bothering me. And that's why I was trying to get it dry and stuff like that. But I'm gonna cut out my struggle footage here, but I worked on it a while <laughs> to try to get it dry. <laughs> And you can kind of see like the little bubbling at the top there. I couldn't really get rid of that. And whenever I kind of pulled on it, even after letting it sit for a while, it just kind of seemed like it was still wet. And so I decided to use my heat gun and kind of melt um, that down. And since it's made out of plastic, it did. It kind of like shrink wrapped it to the side and got rid of most of the bubbles. So win-win. Now I'm just going to take some ivory acrylic and we're going to distress working in one direction with a chunky brush. Um, the reason I'm doing that is just to add a little bit more character to it, make it look less like a plastic bag and more like, you know, a hand painted sign. So I do that, dry it, distress it just a tad more. I like that rustic coastal farmhouse vibe. And so I always distress everything. Now, I thought it was too um, kind of warped after that and too thin. And so I thought I was definitely going to have to double up on my wood rounds to make it a thicker sign and to get rid of this warp. I don't know if I warped it more by using the Mod Podge on there, but what I'm going to do first is just use my little Cricut weeder and we're going to poke some holes back here through the bag. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to make sure that the holes um, on both of my wood rounds line up before I glue them together. Important step. Or you could always do a hanger and just attach it to the back. So I'm just going to feed this through both just to kind of get my spacing good. And this totally worked. It took away all of the warped in my sign and you know, it made it nice, a nice thick sign too. So if you've got another wood round, I would suggest doubling up if you can. 
I just do a good coat of hot glue all around and just simply glue those together. Basically any of the Dollar Tree signs, if you're going to double them up like that, it's just going to make it just so much and much nicer piece because that wood is thin. Now I'm going to use chicken wire that I got at the Dollar Tree can be kind of hard to find at the Dollar Tree. Whenever I see it, I try to pick some up because it's a great deal for $1.25. The reason I'm using chicken wire is because I thought it looks like a beehive with that shape of the different cells. So I'm gonna cut down a piece of that chicken wire a little bit larger than our sign. I thought this was gonna add a lot of character to that and make this look not like just a plain bag glued to a sign, um, but something really intentional with lots of fun and textures. Now my hanger is gonna get in the way at this point, and so I don't really need it on there at this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and just pop that back off and we can reattach it later. Um, I'm going to go in with that chicken wire and I'm going to use my staple gun to a staple that chicken wire all around. Um, so it's probably a good thing I doubled up on the sign because I'm going to definitely need the thickness for my staples. Otherwise it's going to go, um, they're going to go through way too much of that thin sign. So I just start at the top and just start stretching it and stapling all four sides down to the sign. And I don't really know how else you could attach this without stapler. I mean, you could use like a dust stapler if you don't have like one of these kind of staplers, but I love the stapler. I've had the stapler for like 20 years, I think. Um, and it does a great job. The only thing I don't like is I usually don't use it a lot because Dollar Tree signs are so thin, it usually goes straight through them. Then using heavy duty scissors, I'm just using my KitchenAid scissors. I am gonna go around and snip off all of the excess chicken wire. I don't craft with chicken wire very much, but when I do, I always love it. Oh. Now, doesn't that look like a, a beehive, like all the little honeycombs in there? I think that looks just like a honeycomb. I do go back though with more staples just to make sure it is secure and flat and none of that's gonna kind of bow out. I'm not worried about the staples showing because I am gonna frame this out with some rope. But I can go back in and pop in the little hanger that was kind of in the way before. The hardest part is just trying to get it in there. Now, this is the rope that we're going to use um, to frame it out. doesn't really matter which one. This is kind of the larger or medium one um, in diameter. And I thought rope would be perfect. It's going to give you that like bee skep look. And it's going to be a perfect little frame that's going to cover up all of those staples. So just working above the hanger, I'm going to go all the way around and do one row, like just flush with the edges. And again, I like to hot glue like a quarter at a time so my hot glue doesn't dry out. And I think I'm going to go around another time as well, just to frame it out with a little bit more of a substantial frame. You could always use some thicker rope if you had it. This would be really cute with a white rope as well, but I was kind of trying to stick with like this brown um, color scheme to go with my yellow and black today. So just again, starting at the bottom like before, I cut a new piece um, so it's all flush with each other and then kind of sandwich the hanger in there. All the way around. I kind of wish I would have put the hanger in from the back um, I think it would hang a little bit flatter. And since you're going to be covering up that area with rope anyway, you wouldn't see those little plastic tabs that show through. Now it's time to decorate. I got these mixed floral bouquet at the Dollar Tree the other day. My Dollar Trees have been getting some really high-end florals in. I was able to get a whole bunch of lamb's ear. I was really excited. Really nice. Now the surprise on this piece is when I unwind it, it is all like melted together. Can you see that? Like I thought I could just untie it and take them all apart, but no such luck, but that's okay. I didn't really need the stems anyway. I just kind of needed the pieces. I thought this would be really great to frame this out, kind of giving you that like reef look because it's got like these little long pieces and some yellow flowers. So I thought these would look great along the bottom. Um, so I'm just gonna glue these down. 
right here to the bottom of this. And it's gonna kind of decorate the bottom part of this, kind of make it look like a reef. I thought about using one of those little wood bead um, reefs, the round ones from the Dollar Tree for this, um, to decorate it a little bit more, but it was a little too small. So I decided against it and decided to go with a rope. And then the little yellow flowers are so cute. There's three in this little bundle. I'm just gonna use two, kind of having one go in each direction, just like the greenery. And then to cover up that area that I just glued it, I thought one of these little flowers would be really cute. It's gonna kind of give you that daisy look. I know they're not daisies, but I never can find daisies at the Dollar Tree. But I wanted that white with yellow center look. So just using a little hot glue and securing that to the bottom. And I think that looks really cute. Very spring-like. It's officially spring now. It was very hot in Florida here today. Man, in the 90s, I was very hot. I'm like, this doesn't feel like spring. This is summer. <laughs> now check out this great bee ribbon that I got at the Dollar Tree. It's so cute. The only thing I didn't like about it though is it's not wired. So I wasn't sure how I was gonna be able to pull this off. I wanted to do a fun bow for the top, but since it is um, silky and doesn't have any wire structure, I didn't know if I'd be able to pull it off. So I decided to do like a faux bow. So what I'm doing now is just cutting like two tails um, that I can attach to the sign first. Since it's gonna be a faux bow, it's gonna kinda be a multi-step process. I want them to not really cover up my B, so I can actually just place these tails exactly where I want them, just attaching that with hot glue. That way um, it's not gonna cover up my little B too much. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the other piece. I do have a little bit of overlap there. I do have to go back and trim that off at the end. And then I'm gonna cut off another piece to do a loop and just slightly overlapping the edges, pulling it tight in the middle. I'm just going to kind of make a bow like that. I do end up doubling it up to make it a little bit more fluffier. And then I just use twine to tie that together, making sure I leave an overlap in there so it all stays together. And before you get it too tight, make sure your loops are like about equal size. That's when I decided I needed maybe another one. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna cut out another piece about the same size and loop it up. And I still have the twine there on my bow. So I can use that existing twi twine to tie the second bow on there. I just kind of X them for right now to make it a little bit easier to do this. And then I just tie them all together like that. Flip it over, tie it again, and this worked. Um, it's a nice size bow and the loops definitely are staying open um, and you really didn't flatten out like I was worried about. I do go back and kind of like make an upper row and a bottom row on those bows. And then I'm just gonna cut off that excess twine and we can attach that to our little tails. And that's what I mean by like faux bows because really no tying of any bows occurred here. <laughs> it's simple too. So I just attach that with hot glue. I'm just gonna leave the twine in the center. It's gonna go with like the rope around there. And I think we have enough decoration with all the flowers on the bottom of this one. Just fluffing it up. And then I do go in here and kind of trim this piece back because you could kind of see it. And that's it for this BDIY. I think this turned out really cute. What do you guys think about this one? This was kind of a um, what was in my head project. It kind of evolved a little bit. It's not what I pictured in initially, but I love how it turned out. And I love the use of the chicken wire. I just think it has a lot of textures, a lot going on. And I just absolutely love this piece. I really like the idea of using the chicken wire to kind of get that honeycomb effect on there. I think it really added a lot to the piece. This one's gonna be pretty easy. I got one of these little pot huggers from the Dollar Tree in like the spring section, this cute little bee. Um, and he's on a ladder 
And then this is the other honeycomb fabric they have at the Dollar Tree that I have left over from my coffee bar. And then I love these new signs they have. Aren't these cute? This one's a black one. Doesn't really matter. I only bought it because it's shaped like a honeycomb. And I thought we could cover the black part with this honeycomb fabric that I have left over. Um, so what I'm going to do is I kind of want to cut that out to size. It's got a frame on there. So I'm going to flip it over and kind of use a yellow Sharpie um, so it's not too noticeable, um, but and noticeable enough for me to cut it out and kind of draw inside the frame, kind of feeling around how big I need to get it. And I did a pretty good job. It does kind of need to be like pretty close to perfect because we're covering up that black color um, and you don't want too much of that to show through, but we did pretty good here. So I'm just cutting out all six sides of our little hexagon shape. And um, the fabric covers the black paint just fine. It kind of maybe makes the fabric look a little bit darker, but that's okay. And it fits in there great. So let's go ahead and Mod Podge that on. Again, I'm gonna use a nice thick coat of Mod Podge for the fabric. And then lay the fabric down inside. And again, if you can't find the fabric, even though I find it's pretty common, you could probably use scrapbook paper for this as well or print out an image of a honeycomb. It's not a very big size. You could definitely do this with like one sheet of paper. Now the frame is kind of a lighter wood than we've been working with today. We've been working with a lot of like rope color. So I'm gonna go in with some antique wax by Waverly and carefully um, kind of paint that around the sides, wiping off the excess with a paper towel to give me that nice like medium wood stain on there. It's gonna kind of go with the decor. I also want to stain the little wood beads on the hanger and I don't wanna go to the trouble of taking them off. So I just kind of do it on there. Um, the antique wax is pretty forgiving and it doesn't have to be like an even stain. They're not gonna stain evenly anyway. So I just go over it with a couple coats and then wiping off the excess with a baby wipe and it turned out pretty cute. Now, this is our little bee. I'm not gonna modify this guy at all. I think he's perfect because the little um, ladder, it can make it look like he's climbing down into his little honeycomb. And so I thought it would be perfect just to attach it on the top I was trying to decide if I want it in the center or to the side, and I decided the side would probably work better. And I'm simply gonna use some pliers to um, kind of tighten that up. And that's gonna also serve the purpose of attaching it to our sign. Easy peasy, he's really cute too. I use a little hot glue to secure his ladder in place so he doesn't go flopping around when he's hanging out. And this is a nice small DIY if you don't have a lot of space. Now, again, we're gonna use some of those yellow wildflowers that I got at Dollar Tree that we used on that first honeycomb video. And I thought maybe two branches over here on this side would be really cute. Get our flowers in there with our honeybees. And again, I'm just gonna use my staple gun and I'm gonna secure that to that frame because the frame is nice and thick. I am the worst at aiming with this thing. There, that looks great. And then I thought maybe a little rope would be great too because we could frame it out. I'm only gonna cover up part of the frame because we have it stained already, but I did wanna cover up the area there that has the staple. So this is kind of the thinner brown rope. You guys, I have a crate of like brown rope and a crate of white rope from the Dollar Tree at all times because you guys know I use it all the time. It works great for coastal decor and anything rustic really. So if I do it along the bottom like that, it's gonna cover up our staples and it's gonna give us an extra, another fun little texture to this. I think the rope look with the bees definitely works. And so just working one section of the little honeycomb at a time. We're gonna glue that on there. It's also gonna kind of cover up the little metal here, um, hooks at the top of the ladder. Just secure that down. And just going all the way around, cutting it off here when I get to the last row, cause I'll know how long it needs to be. 
Now I thought um, I needed to kind of burn off the fuzzy, so I just use a lighter just to burn those off. Then the only really area of the sign that's not decorated is like the bottom. I thought maybe it needed something, like a word or something. So again, we're gonna use some of those little Scrabble tiles that I love from the Dollar Tree. And there's not much space, so I thought we would just spell out like the word B, and that fits on there perfectly. Just another little fun touch. This is such a cute little sign. You could use this anywhere. Um, you could use it in your kitchen if you didn't have a lot of space. Um, it'd be great like um, just anywhere, even like an office cubicle at work or something like that. So there's our little bee honeycomb. Isn't he sweet? I love how he turned out. That little bee is just adorable. Um, I originally bought that to go on a bee um, tear tray, which I might still do. My bee videos always seem to do well. Um, and But I just thought it would be so cute on a little honeycomb. I think they also have those in like ladybugs and some other items. I always enjoy those. Okay, next DIY, I picked up one of these little craft bee wall decor um, at Dollar Tree. They have two different versions of this, um, two different kinds of bees on them. I used the other one for my coffee bar sign on my bee coffee bar. This is the other version, just a different shape of bee in different position. And then I'm just going to use some bright yellow acrylic and a little makeup sponge, and we're going to paint this little honeycomb. Um, I find the makeup sponge works well for these, but I did find that all the little spaces around the bee, um, it was a little too big to get in there. So I will have to touch those up when I am done painting this. Um, it was really secure on there. Otherwise I would have just popped that bee off, but I, I wanted to make sure that it didn't break it or anything. So I'm just gonna use a tiny brush to get in all the little nooks and crannies that I wasn't able to get into with a little makeup sponge. Then I got some yellow on there already and I kind of wanted a yellow undercoat on my bee. So I went ahead and painted him yellow as well. But I want him to be brown and I want him to kind of look like wood. So I'm just gonna use Antique Wax by Waverly and we are just gonna kind of start staining this little guy. It kind of gave a cool effect because the, the paint color that shows through underneath of it is the yellow. And so it looks kind of cool. I like how this turned out. So I'm gonna stain his entire little body and his antennas and his legs, trying with a tiny brush not to get it on the yellow honeycomb, but I kind of did, but that's okay. I can always just touch it up a little bit. I'm going to wipe off the excess antique stain and look how what how beautiful that bee looks. And then I'm just going to go in with that tiny yellow brush, yellow paint and brush and kind of just touch that up a little bit. I'm going to add this to like a another like hexagon sign from the Dollar Tree and then I kind of wanted burlap to be behind it. I thought that'd be really cute. So I picked up another one of those new signs, a little hexagon signs from the Dollar Tree, and another one of those little burlap bags. I love those things. You guys definitely be checking out your Dollar Trees for these. They are so easy to craft with because look how easy they are to cut. There's no fraying. You're going to get that great burlap look, even though it's kind of a faux burlap. I just love them. So I just cut the front off to give me a nice piece of burlap to work with. And then I want to basically cover the entire sign with that burlap. Um, it's kind of a little bit smaller than the beehive, the, like the honeycomb that we just painted, but it's almost perfect size. It's kind of like a little background. So I am gonna need to cover the whole thing with burlap, including the frames. Now, when I set it on there, even though it's kind of thicker, um, you could still see that the inside was painted black and the outside frame was not. So since you could see through it a little bit, I just use a little black acrylic and we're gonna take care of that just by painting the frame black. So it's always good to kind of, you know, put your fabric on there first to kind of see if you're gonna have any issues if you're covering something like this. And this is gonna be another small, this is kind of a small BDIY, um, kind of would work anywhere. So I got it painted black. And then I'm just gonna go in and hot glue all around. I'm um, doing one section at a time here, one half at a time so it doesn't dry. And gluing that to the frame. 
And that looks so much better now that it's all black behind it. And then I can just pull it up and do the other half. Now I'm gonna go around and trim this up later. The reason I glued it on first is because I thought I really wanted to make sure I covered up all of that black frame. And so I thought if I glue it first and cut it second, I'm gonna get it on there just perfectly and it worked out pretty well. So just using some scissors, I just cut all the way around. I am gonna stain the wood beads at the top. I probably should have done that before I attached the burlap, but it is what it is. And see how it's a little bit larger than that shape, but um, basically all the cutout parts are gonna be covered with burlap, but just using hot glue all around the edges. Now be careful, because I did notice um, the Achilles heel of this burlap is that it did melt a little bit, the plastic on there from the heat from the hot glue. But I am just kind of lining it all up in there and kind of trying to melt any of the excess hot glue. Now, then I was like, oh yeah, I was going to stain this. So I just flip it over to avoid any mess and just use a brush and use Antique Wax by Waverly just because I want to use like that same like medium brown color um, stain that we've been using today, that, which goes great with like the Dollar Tree rope. And so I just stain my wood beads and then go over it with a baby wipe. Easy peasy. Focus camera. And there's our little beehive. Now, the only thing that I or a little honeycomb. I keep getting my terminology mixed up. Um, the only thing I thought it still needed was a flower for honeybees and flowers, right? So I thought I'd use another one of those cone flowers from before from the Dollar Tree. And I think that looks really cute. This one's a colorful one because that yellow that I used is like a bright yellow, but it's fun because a honeycomb would be that color, right? So I'm just going to use a little hot glue and glue our little cone flower down here on the burlap. And that's all there is to it. This DIY was really easy um, for spring or summer, and I think it turned out so cute. Easy peasy, a little honeycomb. I love the colors. And we got lots of good textures on this too with that faux burlap. And our little stained bee. You could always paint the bee, like make it stripes and stuff like that, but um, it'd be kind of hard to paint it attached to the honeycomb without getting paint on the honeycomb below it. I always wish they kind of sold those items separately and let you put them together, but it is what it is. Hey guys, I wanted to take a quick moment out of today's video and let you know about memberships. For $4.99 a month, you can get early ad-free access to my videos, and it's an easy way for you to support me here on YouTube. All you have to do is hit the join button under this video. Now coming up next, I have more bee DIYs for you. I'm gonna be doing my coffee bar for spring and summer in a bee theme. So I'll kind of show you the final reveal at the end of how all of the items come together, but I have another 12 bee DIYs. The first DIY we're gonna do, I always like to do a big coffee bar sign at the top of my coffee bar. And this is the one I had for my St. Patrick's Day coffee bar. And we're just gonna reuse it. I've reused it a million times. It's just a thrift flip sign, just a palette board sign, but it's the perfect size for the top of my coffee bar. So I'm just gonna remove the shamrock. I didn't cause too much damage. I only had to use a little bit of hot glue here at the bottom. So I'm just trying to remove that and any like kind of sticky residue. I did a hand painted sign for St. Patrick's Day. Now today I kind of want to give myself a blank canvas. So I'm just using white acrylic paint and we're gonna go over everything to try to cover up that like painting that we had on there and all of that bright green. What I wanna do is I didn't really want like a bright yellow sign for like bee theme or a black sign. So I thought we could try to do like a faux wood grain on this to kind of do a wood theme for this. I think that's gonna kind of go with my vibe. I have like a removable wallpaper on the wall behind my coffee bar that looks like white shiplap. And so I think it'll go nicely with it because my shelves on my coffee bar are also made out of wood. So just giving that plain white canvas, that meant I had to repaint the sides white as well. Whenever you like hand paint on here, you know, you're going to have a little bit more paint in those areas. 
like where the words are, they're a little bit raised still. So I'm going to try to mask that, cover that up as much as I can. And you guys that have watched my channel for a long time know how many times I've remade the sign, probably like 10, 15 times at this point. <laughs> I've got my money's worth from Goodwill. So I'm just taking Antique Wax by Waverly and a chunky brush from the Dollar Tree and going all over in one direction to give myself that faux wood grain. Now, as you can see, when I did that on the top board, you can see the writing, the shamrock, like the raised paint from when I hand painted that. So it's going to need a little bit more attention up there, but otherwise I'm kind of going all over, kind of giving that faux wood grain. I love to do that. It's such an easy way to get that wood effect. To cover this, I'm just going to go over it with some more white acrylic over both words and then I can go back in and distress more with my antique wax by Waverly until I can kind of mask that a little bit where um, I won't be able to read that in the final product. I'm not going to hand paint it today. I'm going to show you a different technique that's going to make a really easy um, temporary sign. So I love hand painted signs, but sometimes I like to try some different techniques give you guys some ideas of what you can do, even if you don't have a Cricut, because um, I don't use a Cricut at all for this one today. Now, this is what we're gonna put on the front of the sign. I got this at the Dollar Tree in the spring section, a little craft bee, it's a little honey comb with a little wood bead on it, and it's the perfect size for this um, coffee bar sign. So, the first thing I'm gonna do is paint the honeycomb like yellow, this is bright yellow acrylic paint, and I'm just using a makeup sponge. We're gonna go all over that bottom piece of it, just the honeycomb with the yellow. And then I'm gonna do the little honeybee in a different color. Now, I didn't really wanna do a lot of bright yellows and blacks. And so I thought, you know, I did the honeycomb yellow. The sign's gonna be like a wood grain, right? So I thought I would just do the bee in like white in just one color. I'm not gonna do any details or anything on that. I just kinda want it to look a little bit abstract. So again, just using a makeup sponge, I am going to carefully paint that white, trying not to get any paint on the sign below it. I did get a little bit on there, but no big deal. I can just go back in and touch that back up with some yellow. So here's our sign. As you can see, you can still slightly see the lettering on the top, but I think that we can mask it with our current letters. So I'm gonna put the honeycomb over on the left side of our coffee bar sign. And this is that removable wallpaper from the Dollar Tree, the white board. And I am just cutting one board of it off. It's just the right height to do a lettering. So I thought this would be a really fun idea to try to do my own lettering with this removable wallpaper. And then I can just peel it off when I'm ready to switch this out. So I'm just going to use my ruler to kind of help me um, kind of figure out some straight lines here for the letters. What I want it to say is coffee buzz. I thought that would be really cute because my coffee bar is where I always come to get my coffee buzz and it's going to go with my bee theme. So I thought that would be fun. So I'm just trying to do like a boxy C something that's gonna be easy to cut out. So kind of use my ruler on that one to kind of give myself a good start. And I kind of started a little bit further down the, the, the log um, to avoid like the nail holes that were on there on the little wood slat. And so I'm gonna kind of do that boxy kind of effect on all the letters. So the first line we're gonna do coffee. So I'm gonna use that C to kind of measure how big I need my rectangle to be um, to be able to make an O. And all these letters were pretty easy to make in this like boxy fashion. Um, and so when I get the O, I just do a rectangle. I fold it in half and then I cut a little rectangle in the middle and that turned out perfectly. I, I was able to cut them all out pretty easily except for um, the B and buzz and I'll show you how I ended up doing that. So I cut the same size square for 
F and I'm going to need two of those. And I'm also going to need two E's and I want them all to be the same size. So just using that one little rectangle as a reference, stacking two on top of each other, I'm going to go ahead and cut out the bottom of an F. That way I'm, my letters are going to be um, the same since I'm cutting them out together and it's going to make it look more consistent. The F is so similar to an E that I'm going to use that for reference to get my E started. But then changing it to an E and then I can use that E as a reference for my uh, second E. So the top row there is going to say coffee. And this turned out really well. I wasn't sure if this would work. I guess you could always cut this with your Cricut as well. Um, but I kind of wanted to show you an option that you can use in case you didn't have a Cricut. So we're going to spell out coffee. I like to like put words on the top two boards of my coffee bar sign because I usually have things sitting in front and I you won't be able to read it. So since it's peel and stick wallpaper, we're just going to simply peel off the backing on this and just kind of sit them all on there. I think it turned out really good. I was really impressed without using any kind of a cutting machine. And I wasn't sure how well I would be able to paint on top of that antique wax by Waverly. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out another board for the buzzword, just by cutting out another strip and kind of measuring how big I want those rectangles to be. We're gonna go ahead and cut out four of those for buzz. Now the B was the only one that I kind of curved a little bit on the edges because I didn't want it to look like an eight. So I do curve it um, on the top and bottom on the right side. Then I wasn't sure how I was gonna cut the B shape out. So I kind of had to cut it and then I'm gonna have to kind of piece it back together there, but that's fine. And then the U is super easy. And then the Z, I just cut both of them out at once. Just a nice boxy Z. And there we have it. We have all of our letters for this cutout and they're just the right size. So this is an idea if you wanna do lettering on a sign and um, you don't wanna use Dollar Tree stickers or something like that, you can totally make your own. So I was really impressed with how that turned out. I will definitely have to use this technique again in the future. So we have our coffee buzz. And even though I cut that, I can kind of line that right back up and you can't even tell. I went back and forth about what kind of expression I was gonna put on here, but I kind of wanted a B word. So I, I love that I went with coffee buzz. Now to seal that down a little bit, I'm gonna use um, just some matte Mod Podge just to help it stay down. It's not gonna make it stick permanently or anything though. And then we can go ahead and use hot glue to glue down our honeycomb. I had so much fun putting these honeybee DIYs together. I had done a bee tear tray my first year on YouTube, so two years ago. And um, it's like my best video I've ever done. So I was tickled to try to do some bee DIYs again using supplies from the Dollar Tree. I do go over it with a little bit more Mod Podge just because I was kind of worried that some of the letters weren't gonna stay down. They totally do though. So that's the finished product. We're gonna go hang that at the top of my coffee bar and now we can start making everything for the shelves. If you don't have a coffee bar, these things would be great for a tear tray or any kind of decor as well. So this is my first find, a little Be Kind stepping stone from the Dollar Tree. It's so cute. I just wanna make it stand up. So I'm just gonna use a wood block from the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree and glue that to the back to make a little stand. I got two of these. The other one has a little girl gnome, um, bee gnome on it, and it's really cute as well. I really only had room for one on here, but it's kind of a fun idea to use the little stepping stones on a coffee bar or for decor because it's so cute. I didn't have to paint it or anything. The colors are perfect and it looks so nice and rustic with like the concrete. So I think that's going to make it stand up just fine. And there's a little bee. It says be kind. And it's super cute. So this is going to go on the top shelf. Now, this is not Dollar Tree, but this was a clearance find at my Publix grocery store. They had Ray done, and I couldn't believe it because they didn't sell well, so they put them all on clearance. So I got this great little honey pot. Isn't it so cute? It's got a little bee on top. It's got like a little honey 
dipper. Is that what they're called? So I'm just going to turn that around so you can see it. Look how cute that is. And it totally goes with my Ray Dunn mugs that I have on my coffee bar. And it was regularly $12.99. I think I got it like 75% off or something like that. So this is my little bargain honey pot and I love it. And so I had to use it on my tear tray. Okay, our next DIY, this is just a coffee creamer from the Dollar Tree. I always love to pick these up, especially the plain white ones because you can customize them in any way. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use one of these little wall decals from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to cut the little bee off the top. I just needed something tiny for the creamer. And I love to use creamers and stuff like that if I can. Since it is a coffee bar, it kind of goes with a the theme. These are actually just stickers, not decals. So it just sticks right on there. Look at that, just a perfect, easy little DIY. And what we're gonna fill the little coffee creamer with is I actually got this at Michael's. I know I never shop at Michael's, but I was there for some reason. I don't even remember why. And this was the only thing I bought. It was on sale like, you know, 50% off, but look at these little bees. They are like wrapped with string and they have little flowers and I thought they would be perfect for this. And so I kind of splurged on this one, but look how cute they look in that little Dollar Tree coffee creamer. So we're gonna put that on the top shelf as well. Okay, next find, look at this. I got two of these from the Dollar Tree. I'm only gonna use one on the coffee bar but it's a little bee sign, they're so cute. It says be humble and it's like a little slatted wood board and no glitter or anything. It is just perfect for this. And they kind of had them in the spring and garden section at my store. Okay, our next DIY, I picked up this adorable little canvas from the Dollar Tree. It says let it be and it has little honeycombs all over it. I also got one of these wood signs from the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree, and I thought we could make this unframed canvas into a framed print. I always think that makes it look more professional um, and, you know, not quite as plain as just the canvas like that. I didn't really have anything to make a frame for it. So we're going to kind of just take this apart like you were going to like reverse canvas it or something like that. Basically, I just take the hanger off, which I'm going to reuse for this project. Then I'm going to take a razor blade and just go around all four edges, cutting the canvas loose from the existing mount. And then we can put that inside against the wood on the back of that Dollar Tree sign and the frame will go around the edges. And these little signs from the Dollar Tree are the perfect size to do this. As you can see, it's almost a perfect fit for like the folded part, like the actual front of the canvas. So I'm just gonna cut along that fold line and I'm gonna kinda go one side at a time cause I wanna make sure that I don't cut it too small. I don't really want any of the wood to be shown along the side. So I'm kinda just cutting one side at a time, kinda measuring it. And it was pretty much a perfect fit if I just cut on the fold lines. Once I get it all trimmed to size, we can just attach that. I'm going to use um, some matte Mod Podge. And since it is kind of a heavy canvas, I'm gonna have to go a little bit heavy with the Mod Podge. So I just put a nice thick coat on here and then we can just lay that canvas down. I can always clean up any of the excess Mod Podge if I get too much. So I'm just kind of using a baby wipe and kind of cleaning up anything that oozes out, but I definitely wanted it to be well glued down and stick to our sign. And that wood on the frame is not like the best wood, but I think it does make it look a little bit better than the unframed canvas. So if you find this little canvas at your Dollar Tree, be sure to pick it up. Mine was just in like the home decor aisle with everything else. Now I want to repair the frame a little bit. I find that these fall apart sometimes, so I'm just going to reinforce it with my staple gun to make sure that the frame is going to stay together. Now I wanted to add some little bee details to this and I picked these cute little Craftwood 3D bees up at the Dollar Tree in their like spring and garden section and they are adorable. They're just the right size and they have little double sided tape on them already. So all you have to do is peel off the back and you can just start sticking the little bees to the honeycomb.
So I thought these were just the right size for the shape of like the honey cones. And so I'm just gonna kind of start scattering them um, all over the side, kind of in a random fashion. And I've never crafted with these before, but I think I picked up the ladybug ones as well. They're so cute for a spring DIY. I'm also going to put a couple on the frame just to kind of make it look like some have landed on the frame as well. And a little bit here, like in the white space as well. The little canvas says, let it be. So we have like a fun little a bee saying, and we have bees and honeycomb. So this is gonna go perfectly. I'm gonna hang this on the wall um, of my coffee bar. So I don't really have room for this big hanger. Um, I do have the holes already in there though. So I'm just gonna kind of pull it tight like that. Kind of use the twine as decor by tying off the back. And then I'm gonna replace the hanger because I just don't have very much room between the shelves on my coffee bar. So I'm gonna use that existing sawtooth hanger that we took off the canvas. I love those and I always save them if I take them off because they're so easy to apply. You just have to hammer them on. There's no little screws or anything like that that you're trying to screw on. So there's our little let it be sign. And this is gonna go on the bottom shelf of my coffee bar. And we can get started on our next DIY. I wanted to make like a honey jar, like a jar of honey. I thought that'd be really cute. And I do have one of these jar signs left over. Mine is just from, I think Thanksgiving or fall. Um, you can use any of those. They have them for any season if you have one. And then I picked up this great wall art from the Dollar Tree. I did not like the cheap frame. Like it is like literally broken and everything. It has glass on it. So I thought we could cover our honey jar with this cute little bee artwork. So um, if you're in your home decor aisle and you want to de decorate with bees, be sure to keep on the lookout because they have just so many cute finds this year. So we're gonna go ahead and take the frame off. See how the frame is even broken? Not a fan of that. Um, and the glass, and I just want the artwork. It says, don't worry, be happy. It's like simple white and black with like a yellow bee on there. And it's almost the perfect size to cover our jar. And it kind of goes with that white wood pattern that's already on the jar. So I'm just gonna kind of measure out where I need to cut it down just by flipping it over and kind of drawing on it where the jar would go. And as you can see, it's almost a perfect fit for the jar. So I'm just gonna use my scissors to cut the paper down. And this was just a quick, easy way to take this jar sign and personalize it and make it perfect for a bee theme. So I'm just going to kind of cut off a couple corners that I was afraid might stick out just a tiny bit. And then we can go ahead and start securing this down. Um, the leaves do kind of show on each side, but I'm gonna use something to kind of frame it out and it will cover that up. So I am just gonna use a Mod Podge on there and we are going to stick it down. Now be careful, I think I may have used too much Mod Podge on this because I did get a little bit of wrinkling, so I did have to kind of work to try to get this smooth. I'm just using my brayer for my Cricut to try to roll that down and try to get out any air. I probably would have been better if I did with the Mod Podge on the jar and not on the artwork, but we got it on there one way or another. Now to seal it on there and make sure it stays stuck, we are also going to Mod Podge over the top of it. And I always use the matte Mod Podge because I don't like the gloss or the sheen of any of the shinier ones. So I give that a good dry, just trying to make sure I have as much of the wrinkles out as I can. It's not gonna be perfect, but that's okay. And I do go over it with one more coat of Mod Podge just to kind of even it out a little bit. Kind of level it down. We're gonna leave the burlap on the top of the jar because that's perfect. But I thought I could use some of this a decorative nautical rope from the Dollar Tree, the brown rope. This is the skinny thin kind. And I thought we could just border this out. It's gonna kind of go with my color scheme. And it's gonna look nice with that burlap lid and it's gonna cover up the leaves that you can see along the sides that my artwork was not able to cover. So we're just gonna border that out just by putting hot glue all along the edges and putting the rope down. 
I'm, this is going to be kind of a tall sign. I just have enough room for this on my um, bottom shelf of my coffee bar. And I'm not going to do a stand or anything on this. I'm just going to kind of lean this one up against the wall. I think it's going to be perfect. I cut it once I get to the top of the jar here. I didn't really like that the jar now was kind of set back from that rope that was sticking out for the outline. So I do go back and um, frame out the jar lid as well. But I thought this turned out to be just a really cute little jar of honey DIY. I like to do anything that I could. I was trying to think of anything I could do that would kind of go with the bee theme and with like a honey theme. So just simply doing an oval to circle out that jar lid. And that really did kind of make it mesh a little bit better with what I did along the sides. And I'm not gonna do anything else to that. I think it's perfect. I thought about adding some ribbon or something like that, but I kind of like just the simplicity of it. So here's our little don't worry, be happy jar made with Dollar Tree supplies. Hey guys, I wanted to take a quick moment to tell you about my private Facebook group. I have it linked below. I would love it if you would come join us. I also have a Facebook page I'm pretty active on. Also Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest. And I am Crafty Beach on YouTube on all of those. And I would love to see you over there. Okay, next DIY, we're gonna make a bee skep. I picked up one of these little foam pieces from the Dollar Tree. I thought it would be the perfect base to get us started for a little skep for our coffee bar. So I'm going to use that same decorative nautical rope from the Dollar Tree, the thinner brown rope. And it ended up taking like one and a half packages to make the size skep that um, I am going to make today. And I do have experience making these because I did make one of these for my bee tear tray two years ago. Um, I used a metal bucket with that one, but I like this method a little bit better. Now, I know that hot glue likes to um, melt like the styrofoam, but I'm just gonna work quickly with this. So I didn't really worry about it too much. I am just going to go ahead and do a bead of hot glue along the bottom and just making that kind of flush with the bottom of the scab. Then I'm going to keep gluing that around. I want to add glue to the foam um, and the rope below it. That way I, you can't see the green foam through the different pieces of rope. And also I want it to stay close and tight to that foam shape to kind of give me that like cone shape that a bee scap has. I remember researching these when I did the tear tray. And so I think I'm pretty familiar with kind of how they look. Now, when you run out of foam, what you're going to do is just hot glue it to the rope below it. And I'm kind of moving in a little bit each time I do it to kind of make it a little bit skinnier. And I'm going to keep doing that until I taper it off the top. It's going to kind of give me like a dome shape for this little bee scap. And one package of rope is just not gonna be enough for this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish off this package. Again, every time I'm gluing it on the one below it and I go a little bit more towards the inside, making the, the circle a little skinnier. So I did have a scrap piece of this that's gonna be perfect to finish this off. I can just make where I start and stop um, in the back but I do need like a little loop for the top of my skep. So I just cut a piece of rope off now. I'm gonna kind of glue it in there, but I'm gonna probably wiggle that around a little bit. But that's what we have so far for a little bee skep. And we're gonna start right where we left off here and just keep gluing that rope all the way around until it fills up that entire circle, kind of encasing that little loop in the top, which is kind of like, a little like loop thing that you can use to pick the skep up or like a hanger of some kind. I think it's to pick them, to pick them up. And just gluing it tighter and tighter. And then once I get it pretty good and filled in, I can just cut my rope down to size and just finish gluing that down. The shape kept pretty well, even though I didn't have anything inside of it for like the top part. 
I did a pretty good job of gluing them together, so the shape is pretty good. I do want to clean it up a little bit now though, so I'm going to use my heat gun to try to like melt like any hot glue that I have that might be visible since I did use a lot of hot glue on the rope. I also want to burn off all of the fuzzy, so I'm just going to go in with like a long lighter and just kind of burn off any imperfections that I see that are kind of sticking out. It's just going to clean it up. I always like to do that when I work with a rope project. I think it just makes them look nicer. So that looks pretty good. Now the only thing um, I need to do on this still is to make like a little opening, a little hole in the front of the skep. And those are usually black. I'm just kind of working on my shape right there. I'm pretty happy with it. Now I was thinking if I wanted to attach like a black fabric circle or something to the front, but I thought, you know, rope paints pretty well. So I'm just going to use black acrylic paint. I think that's going to be the easiest method to do this. So I'm just going to take a tiny brush from the Dollar Tree and some black acrylic paint. And right in the middle, we're just going to kind of start painting a circle. And don't worry if it's not perfect. You can just make your circle a little bit bigger if you need to until it like looks really good for you. So I kind of add to mine to kind of make it look a little bit more symmetrical. And it actually turned out to be just about the right size. And I'm really glad I did that method. I think that worked better than what I did before. Now I thought it'd be cute to add a few more details and I do have a few of those little wooden bees left over from the Dollar Tree. I didn't think the sticker would stick too well to the rope though. So I'm just gonna use hot glue and gluing those kind of coming in and out of the little bee scab. And that's how it turned out. I think this is gonna be perfect on the bottom shelf of my bee coffee bar. What do you think about that one? Okay, next DIY. I picked up one of these great little honeycomb plaques from the Dollar Tree and some honeycomb fabric from the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree. They had two different kinds of this. This is kind of like an orange honeycomb. The other one was kind of a brighter yellow, but either one will work. I actually picked up both. Now I wanted to use two of those little honeycomb um, frames together, but I just didn't have enough room left on my coffee bar. So we're just gonna do one. I'm just putting the fabric upside down in the frame and kind of drawing the little octagon, um, or I guess it's a hexagon shape. Um, on the fabric to kind of give myself a little bit of a pattern. I like the black frame, but I want to cover up the artwork that's on there and make it look like a honeycomb. So once I get that on there, I just cut that down to size. What I found out is that it was way too small. So that kind of worked to give me a reference point piece, but it was way too small. You could totally see the edges around it by doing that technique. So what I'm going to do is use that as a template on my honeycomb fabric. And I'm just going to go out like maybe an eighth of an inch on all sides and draw that back onto the back of the fabric to make a little bit bigger shape for my honeycomb. And that got really, really close. So what I'm gonna do is fold this in thirds. That way I can go ahead and cut all three of these out at the same time. And hopefully they will all be the same size of the little frames there. They have these, they say like all different kinds of things cause my other honeycomb sign said something different, but they're perfect for a bee theme, especially if you cover them up with this honeycomb fabric. Isn't that cute? You could also do that with scrapbook paper if you had it. I only usually shop at Dollar Tree, so I usually don't have any scrapbook paper because they usually don't have anything. But you can always DIY with this Dollar Tree fabric. It turns out great. So just putting Mod Podge down, I did a rather thick layer of Mod Podge because I am attaching that fabric and I want it to stay down inside of the little black frame. And just using a baby wipe to kind of clean up any Mod Podge that kind of seeps out. And actually I can kind of put that on the top as well. So we're gonna do the same thing with the other two little honeycombs. 
And um, I'm going to also attach that B to this to kind of make it like a bigger piece. And that little B that you see there is just a B yard stake that I got at the Dollar Tree as well. I'm also going to go over the top of the fabric with that Mod Podge just to make sure that it is going to stay down and stay glued. And as you can see, it's pretty close fit. You can kind of see the white background behind it. And towards the end, I do touch that up with just a little bit of yellow paint to kind of make it look better. But for now, I just want to make sure that I get all that Mod Podge dry and then we can start decorating this. The honeybee is kind of perfect, but it kind of needs a few things. The wings are very like rainbow colored, which doesn't really go with the colors on my coffee bar. So I do want to tone those down. I start with a little of that bright yellow acrylic and kind of distressing the wings with that. That did help tone down the rainbow color, but I found that you could still kind of see that through it once I do do the paint that yellow. So we're going to add another color to this to kind of um, tone it down some more. But I'm going to go ahead and do yellow on the other little bee wing as well. And he is so cute. I'm going to have it look like he's kind of flying away from the honeycomb from the beehive. And so I have a little bit of acrylic metallic silver. I thought that might look good for a wing to kind of make it look iridescent and kind of pick up that great texture that was already on the metal B. So I distress all over with some of that silver over the yellow and the combination turned out really nice. Kind of a translucent um, yellowish gold wing for our little bee. I'm going to kind of attach it to the back of the frame, I think, like that with the yardstick that's on there. Um, so I do want to not take all of it off. I want to actually bend the yard stake and use part of it. So that kind of makes it a little bit harder. Um, I do use some pliers and kind of bend it back and forth until I can get it weak enough to make it pop and snap. It's kind of easier if you're taking the entire stake off the back, I have found. But I just wanted a shorter stake and I was able to get it to break off. Now, the only thing I don't like about the bee at this point is it's a little glossy um, for all the DIYs I'm doing today. I'm doing much more of a matte finish, kind of a farmhouse vibe to these DIYs. So I am going to go over the bee with some matte Mod Podge as well, just to tone them down a little bit. And this project kind of evolved. I kind of knew what I wanted to do with it, but I kind of keep adding to it and it gets cuter and cuter. <laughs> So I got a pretty good coat all over on this guy and then I'm just going to give him a quick dry and then we can work on attaching him to our honeycomb. So I'm just going to kind of have it coming out the top on a corner, um, kind of like that. And I thought I could just use my staple gun and staple that to the back. Just an easy way to attach that. And I kind of had a dead space on my coffee bar that kind of needed something there anyway. And that B is going to be the perfect size to kind of fill up that area. Just kind of cleaning up some of the Mod Podge that had seeped on the back of that. And making sure my staples are stuck in there. I don't want that going anywhere. Okay, I thought this was really cute as is, but I thought, you know, it could be even cuter. Like I could use some letters and make it like a little sign. So there's three little honeycombs. So I thought that'd be perfect. We could spell out like the word B in the three different honeycomb shapes. So I'm just gonna use some of these wood letters from the Dollar Tree. These are great. You get like one of each letter in a package. And so I'm just going to go through here and find the letters to make B. And it's just going to be a quick, easy assigned DIY with these honeycombs. So B-E-E. -E. And you could leave the natural wood. I think I'm going to go ahead and paint mine, though, to kind of make it go with my color scheme. So I thought white would look nice and kind of contrast against that honeycomb. So just using a makeup sponge and some white acrylic, we're going to simply paint these. Super easy. And then we can attach that to the fabric on our, the front of our little honeycombs. So sometimes with a project like this, you know, if it doesn't seem quite right, you can kind of keep adding things to it until it is perfect. 
And that's what I found with this one. So I'm just gonna use a little tiny bit of hot glue on the back of this letter. I don't want any extra like seeping out. And just kind of glue those to the center of each one of those little honeycomb cells. Super cute. I was a little worried about that white border that you kind of see around the honeycombs. It's cute, but it was bothering me. And so I am going to go in and just touch it up a little bit just to make myself feel better. I don't really have any yellow that's quite that honey color, but I do have that bright yellow that I've been using today. And so I'm just going to go in there with a tiny brush and just touch that up a little bit. And now I think it's perfect and ready to go. This is letting it look so cute on the bottom shelf of my coffee bar. Okay, next DIY, I found this actually at Dollar General, this little honeycomb candle holder. It was $3. I thought it was absolutely perfect for this. So even though it was $3, I did pick it up. And if you can't find that, they do have the cutest little honeycomb candles. This is a white one at the Dollar Tree. They also have a yellow one, so you could use something like that as well. And most of these projects today, except for the bigger signs, would be great for a B tier tray as well, including this cute little guy. So I'm just going to put a Dollar Tree candle inside and easy peasy. Okay, I always like to do banners for my coffee bar and I have two shelves and I found this great craft fabric at the Dollar Tree in the Crafter Square. There's like a honeycomb one, but there's also a really cute bee one. I've never um, picked up any of these before, but basically they're just long strips of fabric. And so I thought it'd be really cute to do like a little mini pennant banner with this since it's so skinny. And um, my shelves aren't very big. I think that will look really cute across it. So what I'm gonna do is just start cutting out like rectangle sized um, pieces of the material and I'm kind of avoiding the wrinkles in there just so I don't have to iron it. Um, and so that's why I'm cutting a new piece and then kind of using that piece as a template. And at first I thought five would be enough. I always like to do an odd number. Um, I do go back and add more because it wasn't quite enough because they're real tiny. Now I have them all stacked on top of each other, all five, and I'm just gonna cut halfway um, across the bottom up to the corner. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. It's gonna give me that little pennant banner shape. And as you can tell, they're gonna be real small, so a little mini pennant banner. And since I cut them all together, they're all pretty much the same size. And I already cut this twine down to size to make it the perfect size for my little coffee bar shelf. This would be really cute to do a little banner around the tear tray as well if you're doing a bee tear tray for spring. So I'm just gonna flip them all over and then we can just start attaching them. I like to do about halfway um, up the rope. That way I can just center it for my spacing. And since I'm just gonna hot glue these to the back, it's the easiest way. Um, I am gonna have to measure because they're not gonna be movable once I get them on there. And I decide to do like one inch in between each one just to kind of give myself some equal spacing. And the, like, just the jute twine is fine. It's just gonna kind of give it that rustic vibe. And the fabric was pretty good about not fraying. But if it does a little bit, that's gonna be fine. It's gonna kind of go with that rustic vibe. So we have all five pieces. I got these all glued on here and then I kind of took it to my coffee bar to see how it looked. And it looked like it needed a few more pieces. So I am gonna add a few more to it. Just trying to cut off any excess hot glue or anything like that. Clean it up a little bit. And then I'm going to cut two more of these. So I'm just going to kind of use one of these for reference to cut down two more triangles for the pitted banner and then attach those along each side. I have enough room to do like one inch space between them all and then that looked really good. I'm gonna do like a different pennant banner for the top and the bottom, um, just for a little bit of variety on this coffee bar. But I always think this is the perfect final touch when I'm decorating my coffee bar for sure. And I DIY'd my coffee bar out of a $12 dresser that I got at Goodwill on clearance. 
And I do have a video on my channel about that, about how I turned just a tiny wall in my kitchen into a coffee bar. Um, if you're interested in doing the same, it was really fun. I didn't think I was gonna be able to work it in. It's like a wall that had a light switch and all different kinds of things in the way, but I made it work. Okay, the other banner, I thought I would use one of these little spinny yard stakes from the Dollar Tree, we could make little bees. I thought these would be the perfect for bees if I could just find a way to take them off here. I've never dismantled one of these before, so at first I thought maybe they don't come out, maybe they're wired all the way through, so I tried to use some like floral scissors to cut that wire, but no go on that, it's really thick. And then I realized that, hey, they do come out. And so I got one out here. I thought we could do like three bees and those are going to make the perfect little bee bodies for me now be careful when you're pulling them out my first two were successes and then I don't know what I was doing but once the wire kind of came out of mine there was really no going back putting it in there but cautionary tale be careful when you're pulling them out luckily I only needed three because I screwed up three <laughs> but the last one finally came off I wanted the wire to stay in there to kind of give me a little structure for my bee. And I thought that would make a really cute bee body. It's almost the perfect shape and everything. And the black border is good. Now I needed something to make wings out of. And I thought one of these little burlap bags from the Dollar Tree would be just perfect for that. It's going to go with my, you know, brown vibe. I have brown in a lot of my objects today, like the faux wood and my wood shelves and like all the rope and everything. So I thought this would go nicely. So I just cut the front off my bag. This is like a, a synthetic burlap. So it kind of has like a glossy back. Um, I've been able to find these a lot in my Dollar Tree lately. Um, they're really nice to craft with because they're really easy to cut and they don't fray at all. So kind of do like a lopsided heart pattern just by drawing that out with my ink pen to represent a cute little wing for our little bee. And I think that looks really cute. Just a like kind of a lopsided little heart. So I'm gonna use that as reference. I'm gonna need like three right wings and three left wings. So just using that as a template, we can cut out more pieces. Now, when I wanna do the other side, I kinda of do glossy side to glossy side to kinda of give me a mirror image to cut out the other side. And then once I get that one cut out, then I can use that as a template to cut out two more. I didn't want like too big of a wing, but I wanted something kinda of cute that we could kind of have them open and kind of go to the sides of the bee. And then I wanted something round and circular for the little honey um, bee head. And I thought those little wood discs from the Dollar Tree would be perfect. I've been able to find these a couple of my big Dollar Trees lately. Um, they have like the chips, they have these slices, and they also have like the twig sticks. They're so cute for crafting. If you see them, be sure to pick them up. But you could use whatever you have that's round. You could even use probably a wood bead. So I'm just gonna hot glue the tips of my little wings to the top of my little bee. And then using hot glue on the wire in the top part of the bee, I'm gonna glue down the cute little bee head. <laughs> just something kind of simple and abstract. I'm not gonna do any antenna or anything like that. But I did want it to have like the bee body, wings, and a head. I think these turned out really cute. So I'm just gonna do the same thing with the other two, just gluing on both wings and a little bee head. And I'm working on a silicone mat, so that comes in handy when you're working with hot glue because it's not gonna stick to it. So we have three bees. They're kind of bigger than the pennant banners, banners before, so I think there's gonna be um, plenty to fill this up. So I'm just gonna flip them over and hot glue that twine that I cut down to size on the back of each one of those little wood slices. I am gonna get my tape measure out though because I wanna make sure that I have equal spacing between them. And this is gonna look really cute. I'm gonna do this one on the bottom shelf of my coffee bar, kind of overlapping my coffee cups that are hanging below it. 
and I just attach those with a little dot of hot glue on each side of my coffee bar shelves. I find that to be the easiest way to hang like a little lightweight pennant banner without too much damage. And let me give you like a little sneak peek of how my bee coffee bar turned out. And I'll give you a little bit better look around here in the final reveal that's coming up next. I love all these bee items from the Dollar Tree and the things that we kind of made bee items. Um, such a cute, fun theme. I usually do bees for spring. I know a lot of you guys do bees for summer. I think it would be great either way, but they have some really cute pieces. And I've even seen some new stuff this year that I've never seen before. So keep your eyes open for bee items at your Dollar Tree. You're going to be um, pleasantly surprised with how much stuff they have. So cute. Okay, you've made it to the final reveal. Thank you so much for watching the entire video. That always helps so much. Be sure to comment your favorite bee DIY below in the comments or just come say hello. And don't forget to like this video. And if you haven't subscribed, I'd really appreciate it. We're trying to get to 30,000 subscribers. Okay, enjoy the final reveal. Gonna let the sun shine in the day I'm trying to make this darkness go away I'll paint with colors And I'll sing until my lungs give out mm -hmm. I'm gonna let the sun shine in the day And I will leave my windows open So that I can hear the sound of Stop. 
like things are gonna go my way. I'm gonna let the sun shine in the day. I'm gonna let the past be filled with smoke. And I will try to fix what has been broken. And take this weight off my shoulders. Cause I know yesterday ain't coming back. Gonna let the past stay in the cold. I will listen to the ocean, let its unsaid words be spoken, and I'll let my mind be carried by the waves. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you got lots of bee crafting inspiration today. I also want to give a huge thank you and shout out to my Crafty Beach Fun members for supporting my channel here on YouTube. Thank you to Karen O'Haran, Pamela Bergeron, I Am Mojo Jojo, Melinda Elizabeth, Jamie Job, Susan Edmonds, Carrie R, Tracy Knight, Nancy Wunner, Julie Miller, Tammy Coates, Janae Farrington, Pamelia Wren, Maria Grace, Donna Schreiner, and Sandy C. Thank you so much for supporting me here on YouTube. I really appreciate it. Now, if you'd like more Dollar Tree DIYs, YouTube thinks that you might enjoy this video right here. Happy crafting.